Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk Podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes4sale.com. So that's flutes the number four sale.com flutes for sale.com just be sure to use that code tfc for all those perks and a little bit of that does go our way another sponsor as well ourselves we have a store if you haven't noticed yet we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com we have some shirts and posters and things like that over at teespring so you can definitely go there and get some merch posters whatever you'd like that we have it will be there you probably notice it under our videos if you're interested be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com that helps us out immensely so yeah on with the show hi everybody welcome to the flute talk podcast i'm nick and i'm emily how's it going emily very well how are you i'm good i'm good this is the podcast uh, that we do uh on the last sunday of every month april it caught us a little bit early so that's a there's still a little bit more of April left to go, but uh, we're going to talk about uh, our favorite flute music and just flute music in general. So if you have any questions about that, uh, leave it down in the comments uh, while we're here live. If you're listening to this post, then uh, go and leave a comment over on the actual video uh, when it's out and released on YouTube or leave us a voicemail over on anchor.fm slash flute and uh, we can play back the uh, message over on the show live and that's about it. So how was your week? How was your month? How many? You had a couple of new students uh, added yeah, to the studio. Had three, a lot of three or four new students. students yeah. That which was, is cool. Yeah. It's always cool. From all over the place. Like, yeah. it's pretty cool. It's like a traveling little, a little bit. Some in Europe, some in everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> some here. It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, we'll just jump right into it. We're also going to talk a little bit about the middle register too, because you're going to have a future video soon talking about the middle register. So we're going to yeah. talk a little bit about that. And we'll answer questions. Of course. Uh, questions live is always warranted. Also, uh, just say hi in the chat if you're there. But yeah, what are some of your favorite uh, go-to pieces that you've always loved to play or maybe even played like played at home or played in concert or wherever? What are some ones that you always like to fall back on? Um, even just general music too. Yeah, well... Because I know you're a pianist as well. Yeah, yeah, but like we're talking more about flute music. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, I guess uh, Syrinx is a big classic for me. Mm -hmm. and um i don't know like i don't i like a lot i love a lot of different types of music i'm not a big uh you know i don't have a one thing that i love and more than the rest i always love the piece that i'm playing at the moment you know like i feel like uh, you have to make it sound like it's your favorite when you play it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I don't know. And more and more, I like um, being a bit more open about what I play. I right. used to be, you know, when you're in university and when you're in that that music, classical mm -hmm. music world, it's very rigid and uh, people are a bit judgy about the repertoire sometimes. Right. Like you have to play the big canons of the sure. flute. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sometimes, yeah, it's true. I, I still like doing that. Of course. But <laughs> I'm more open now to playing um, different things that are for different instruments that are classics of classical music or even just uh, beautiful music from any style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the more I grow, the more open I get about different styles and, like, music is music. Yeah, exactly. And, like, even, like, you were just saying before, uh, the canon of, of certain types of mus uh, flute music, like the big ones, like, sometimes we also tunnel vision and not see all the other works that are around that are also part of the canon because like you know there's so many beautiful works that are not necessarily not known but yeah and are. like teachers very often will choose uh you know when you're learning and if you're doing competitions obviously if you're doing a competition you have to have some piece that are going to be impressive you know right 
but maybe now I'm not at that point in my life where yeah. I need to be impressive. Like I can still want to play Chandelinus if I want. Like it's yeah. cool to play it and it's cool to have a challenge yeah, and yeah. it's beautiful music mm -hmm. too, but so is uh, the swan, you know? Right, right. <laughs> and like, it's also like, because you're in school, you're there are certain pieces, I guess, that teachers have decided are pieces that can be well, ad well adjudicated on or well, uh, you know, criticized so that you can, you know, that yeah. tackle most aspects or certain aspects. Or if you can play that, then you're a virtuoso right or, like the test pieces in the french conservatory and stuff like that yeah back in the you day know and stuff like that yeah and i get why they're there and i love them too but like yeah i'm a bit more open now to playing for the public too you know not just yeah, yeah, for exactly. my peers and my teachers right. and exactly. i'm somewhere else now but like i still like both yeah i still love to learn the exactly the classics of the flute, like the canon, the big repertoire, but mm -hmm. yeah, have a little bit more of an opening. Thanks to Odyssey as an oh ascension, two hundred dollars a super so chat much. as usual. That's uh, or not as usual, but it's very nice to see yes, people doing thank that. Thank you so much. Thank it's you so so, so much. Very generous of you. Also, guys, if you find our content useful, use the super chat. It's a it's a direct way to help us out. If you don't want to do Patreon, or if you don't want to do, or if you can't buy a new flute or any of the things that we do. This also helps out a lot through the super chat, and that's oh, yeah. amazing. But I saw a question also a little bit further behind was Sherry uh, Reghart. Sorry if I'm pronouncing her last name wrong. She's in the process of buying a new Burkhart flute, and it's tuned to 442. Is there a preference between A440 and 442? We had a thing this I past week uh, about a tuning member with, during yeah, a recording yeah. this past week. Yeah, I think 442 is better. Yeah, I think so because, too. Because like you can't... If you're playing at 440, you'll just have to... Uh, take it out a little bit right. more, more but the thing is if you have a 440 and if you want to get higher and it doesn't get higher like what you're going to have to cut your flute mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah, exactly and more and more pianos are tuned 442 like we did a concert and at the yeah. conservatory uh, right two years ago yes. maybe and the piano was at 442 yes, and very was. often yeah I'm like, and my flute, I was thinking I might have to change my head joint, even though I love it. Because yeah. it, it's when I, I'm at 442, I really have to push it all the way. In yeah. And, eh, you know, sometimes it's a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would, yeah, I would say the same thing pretty much. Like, that's the, because uh, the, the thing pitch is, is getting higher. People are getting a bit higher. Yeah. The, the tendency right now, the, the pitch is getting higher over the past, let's say, 50 years. Yeah. You know, like if you're too low, 442 is higher than 440. Yeah. If you're too low compared to the pitch mm -hmm. you want, you want to get higher, you make your flute shorter. So you just yeah. bring it in. Yeah. If you're too high, you bring yeah. it out. So it's easier yeah. to bring it out Way than to bring it, bring it in. Yeah. So take a 442. Yeah, do that. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, but that's the that's the tendencies we're now in, in, in the world. Everybody, we're getting more global, so worldwide people are getting accustomed to 441 442 i know when i was younger it was 440 all the time but it's slowly going up it might stay stable for a while but that's the tendency for our yeah. years i guess i remember when i was a student they were like some people were saying that in vienna in places like that the pitch was a bit higher right mm -hmm. and yeah now it like you say it's getting like that everywhere exactly because it's a bit more shiny i guess mm -hmm. when you play higher so people like that mm -hmm. Uh, let's come back to the main topic again with the flute pieces. I saw a question here. It's kind of a fun one, but what are pieces that should be illegal? <laughs> Meaning they're so difficult that... Uh, maybe difficult or maybe like just, I guess, they're the cheese of the cheese, I guess. Like, you know, oh, like, okay. I don't know. I don't know maybe it's which, that. Which, yeah, which sense? Sense? Like yeah. too difficult or uh, yeah. too cheesy? Yeah, I don't know. There's obviously like a lot of cheese stuff, but I mean, like, I know a lot of people say sacrilegious stuff, like sacrilege for like the bumblebee and all those things, but I've heard it live and it's absolutely phenomenal when you hear it live. Like, there's a lot of pieces out there that I don't know. I don't think there are many sacrilegious pieces. I think we do it for the sake of comedy. <laughs> and not just comedy. I think people really like it for like. No, but I mean, to say sacrilege, like how Two Sets says it and all those things, like certain pieces should not be like playing that is not in style or sacrilege yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I think it's yeah. just the sake of comedy. I think a l yeah, all I think pieces are still out. All pieces are out there, are available. You know, like cheesy... Uh, what, like... It's, it depends on context, of, I guess, huh? Cheesy for one person is yeah, uh, amazing, super right? touching for another person. Who am yeah. I to say what's Like, what's Puro cheesy? Cabeza is, might be cheesy for somebody, 
that piece of yeah. but for most it's very romantic and people remind themselves from the movies or from weddings or whatever you know what i mean like and that has a whole, uh, a huge weight on their heart or their mind yeah. and stuff like that and it's not always what we think is uh is the most uh work because we think that because we put more work in a piece people are going to appreciate it more it doesn't uh, work like that when i was mm -hmm. a teenager i used to play a lot of um ambiance music you know because i was in a special music high school and then people would call the high school the music department and say like oh do you have musicians to play for this thing you know and we would go a couple of kids together and play for different little things i remember one time i played a very difficult piece you know we would i would play a piece my violinist pl friend would play another piece and we would play a duo you know we mm -hmm. would. so i played this super difficult piece no one reacted you know full right. of very tough passages i had worked very hard on it and then my friend plays memory from um cats it's from cats memory mm -hmm. yes it is and it was way easier than anything we had played before and people were like oh that is so beautiful and they applauded and that was the first time i realized oh yeah there's and who am i to say that it's cheesy it's right. still beautiful like if you look at it very w without our snob musician <laughs> eyes i think It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, first time you hear it as a kid, you're touched, you know? I don't know. That's yeah, yeah. my opinion. I, I'm not too snob about it. Well, he's also clarifying here, and that's what's the wonderful thing about the live chat, is uh, artificial difficulty or just not rewarding to play. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a lot. It's true that some pieces are so difficult, yeah. but don't sound difficult. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's the key. The, the key, key signature oh, yeah, key makes signature, it yeah. difficult, but it's not necessarily putting yeah. the flute in in the yeah you know there's a lot of modern pieces that have that aesthetic which is too bad but there's also a lot of modern music that has complete joy out of uh playing those things like you played a, a modern concerto recently you've played two or three modern concertos in the past like five ten years and like they're all sound very melodic very beautiful yeah even though they have some contemporary techniques but i've also heard like other stuff that just doesn't you know what i mean like but there's like good ones like crumb george crumb made a very oh, yeah. very very nice one about voice of the whale and a couple other things like that pandarecki is a very very good concerto like very if you can hear it live it's pretty phenomenal yeah uh, oh yeah it's beautiful but like but pieces that are pieces. super difficult but don't look difficult sometimes sometimes i feel like back is very difficult for me because of mm -hmm. the breathing because like a traverso i think takes a little bit less air than a right. modern flute yeah and so the phrases are so long yeah plus he wrote in the mindset of an organist you know so he thinks lines are supposed to be endless yeah, yeah. you know and sometimes like now it's better than it used to be because obviously my breathing is better than right. when i was younger because yeah. i'm getting you know just working better. <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting better but um yeah you know i think uh It's always been a bit tough for me, those long phrases that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or when you play something for another instrument that, again, the breathing part. Right. And then some keys are more difficult, I guess. Yeah. You know, if you have a lot of... Um, if you have a lot of sharps. Yeah, like C sharp minor or something. Yeah. Like for tuning, it's more difficult. Yeah. Than for oh, for tuning, exactly, yeah. Especially if you're playing with other instruments, it can be... You got to really have your ears open to a lot of those yeah, things. Yeah, because some of those notes are a bit tricky. Like, I don't know. We have a lot of foundation keys that what, we're very comfortable with. What pieces with. did you feel like you worked hard and the result was not necessarily a... The um, there was a lot, maybe a couple. Like, I guess some of the Robert Dick pieces, like Fisher Jumping is amazing, but then like his etudes are not so Yeah, good. I remember working a lot on it. I worked so hard on them and then I didn't really it, get much out of them. It didn't sound so good. Yeah, and I played some for some people and they didn't get it, unfortunately. Yeah. And even, well, not even, and then maybe one that looks super hard, but actually is quite amazing, that's quite fun to play is the Jolivet incantations. If you know the story about it and stuff like that, about like the hallucinogens and all the things that the, the native people, it was about native people and like going on a journey through, you know, time and stuff like that. And it's a whole process of those incantations. And like, it's very, very like movie-like because he was, I think, did a movie scores as well. But it's very, very programmatic. It's like one of the most programmatic works, 
Jolivet. Well, I like Jolivet because like it's tough. Like it's I played, super I tough, played the. Yeah. Um, but they were worth it. It was worth playing. Chandlinos. It's very difficult, yeah. but it sounds amazing. Yeah. You know, and it's exactly. so impressive. That, totally. Yeah. So it's you work hard, but you get yeah. also sometimes some um, mm. some transcriptions. Like I have uh, the transcriptions of the Paganini. Yeah. Caprice by I don't remember who transcribed One of those, them. Yeah. It's not like I remember again practicing super. Like a lot, yeah. and it still wasn't amazing. And even like the twenty fourth one, I did my own transcription because some mm-hmm, things I mm-hmm. thought, like it, the the transcription I had didn't sound anything like, like some of the variations right. didn't sound anything like the 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 violin. The violin version. You know, it's I like would, they didn't even consider it. They just went note for note in a way, not even, but not even thinking like about when, like when there were many strings, they would make arpeggios yeah but you can't make like no. the rhythm was completely different the yeah. mel- melody it was, kills the rhythm like i was like what is that yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound anything mm-hmm. like it so gotta be yeah. careful with those things exactly when in consideration when you do tra- transcriptions, me, transcriptions can yeah. be a bit tricky yeah. sometimes exactly but yeah so uh let's jump a little bit forward to i saw um a couple of questions how old are you guys and how long have you been playing the instrument well we've been playing for a long time at least 30 years each. Well, no, not me, but... Me, 29 years 29 now. 29 years, and then 22 <laughs> years or something like that, 23 years for me, so there yeah. you go. Uh, what else? Oh, what brand of flute? We're at more yeah. than 50 years together, yeah, like exactly. a half a century of... Uh, of experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what the fl- What brand of intermediate flute do you recommend, the flute player? I know we get this question a lot. You know, we have a couple videos about it, but, you know, there's a lot of choice now. Oh, yeah. So like there's no one choice. Price yeah. bracket and go on the Center of, New York. Center of New York website or call them and then get some flutes try and try them out. different ones and find what suits you. But there's a lot of good flutes like Sonari, yeah. Yamaha. Uh, yeah. Trevor, Trevor James, James, Yamaha, uh, Powell, Sonari. There's so many. Haynes makes some. Meinhardt makes some high ones. Try a couple. You can try a three, I think, for 10 days with them. And they have the largest selection there. So... You know, you also have to maybe record yourself while you're playing. Also, figure out how you feel with the instrument a lot as well. It's, it's also how it sounds outwards, but also how you make the sounds and how easy it is and how, you know, push-shove relationship between the instrument, how how much do you think you can grow with it, all those things. But there's a lot of people who stay with their intermediate flute their whole life, and a flute with proper repair and stuff like that and proper uh, maintenance will last your whole life. Yeah, keep a budget to keep it up so it's a know? lifetime budget it's a lifetime budget lifetime uh thing so you don't in the end you're you're just having your own thing and like maybe get a new head joint in 10 years or 15 years and not necessarily the whole body of the flute because head joints are way cheaper than a newer professional model flute you know between yeah, sometimes yeah. between one plus, to ten times most more people if you know if you're in playing for fun you might yeah. not even hear a difference in your right. playing yeah. between the but yeah, there might not be exactly. worth the investment, yeah. you know. But you set can a budget. Have fun with a good intermediate flute yeah. and have fun for a while. Yeah, a while and also just also keep or a, your yeah, whole life. Whole life yeah. <laughs> but just keep in mind that after you know, if you play a lot, after a year, each year bring it to the technician. They'll check if the pads are okay or if the pads are ripped or some need to be replaced or all need to be replaced or the mechanism is worn out and needs to be re Re-oiled. Re- re-oiled and readjusted and all those mm-hmm. things because that happens because it's a need it's to a machine clean it and oil it yeah it's a machine that needs to uh, be adjusted because yeah. there's friction it's a friction made instrument <laughs> it works by friction so you have to also think about that like if you just put everything on the flute and then you don't have money to keep it up you know right it's just keep that in mind yeah oh yeah pearls are a really good flute as well yeah. too it's a, yeah it's really amazing uh, there's a lot of great flutes there um, what else do we got here. I saw something else that was pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about middle register. Our second sec- subject, you know. Um, the, what, what is the middle register first? Jennifer, she's a new flutist, and she wants to know what is the middle register. Okay. So um, maybe I'll take my flute for that. Sure. So, like from this low C, the first C. <laughs> To the C here, it's like the low register, and then the second octave from the second C to the third one, 
that's the second that's the middle register and then I won't play the higher one because my microphone is adjusted for voice and I don't want to <laughs> hurt your ears but above that third C is the yeah third octave or high register yeah there you go so like you know that's uh, the middle register and like you get a lot of people recently and even throughout forever like having difficulty in the middle register people always talk about low register and high register but there's that middle register that a lot of people get a bit uh yeah i was surprised because like i used to have i don't know like lately i've had a couple of students who had difficulties with only the middle register like low register is fine high register is fine and then the middle register tends to go back to the first octave and I was like, that's weird, because if you know how to blow the third octave, you should be able to blow the second octave, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I realized the third octave, it's all different fingerings as well. As for the second octave, it's mostly the same fingerings as the first octave, but you just have to blow differently. So if you, if you just slow down your air a little bit, it goes back down in the first octave, and that's the issue. Mm -hmm. So, like, it comes back to airspeed again. It's really about airspeed and keeping it up. Because what I hear a lot is people, they hit the note, and then after a second or two, it goes right in the first octave. Yeah. Or you hear both at the same time. Yeah. So it's about keeping the air pressure, using the muscles that are doing this. Yeah. You know. I think middle. Yeah. You're when right. you do so the right. sound. Wow. Put your hand on your belly and feel which muscles are involved. And like those are helping with air pressure and you have to use them and keep them involved. And when we get a bit too uh, relaxed yeah, there, then exactly. it tends to lower, yeah. you know, and keep the, keep the mouth like a mask, you know, mm -hmm. that doesn't have to, uh, yeah. you don't need to do big movements there. No. There's a little, little movement of the jaw that goes a little forward when you, when you play uh, higher mm -hmm. and little, like, but it's very yeah. tiny. Mostly, it's it's a question of airspeed. Right, and I think like the middle register is probably the most. I think the middle register is the most important register out of all the registers because high register you can go to a certain speed and it's going to sound high. You know, it's going to stay in that. You know, high notes they can stay if you get there. If you know how to play it, it's going to be always rel relatively. Uh, you know. Um, always the same but mm -hmm. mid register there's so many colors there's so many different ways and you have to keep support and there's so many i think we yeah. if we all focus a little bit more on middle register all the other registers will benefit as well too big time yeah but i think i see different people have different um yep. difficulties yeah. too but so i've noticed a lot of middle register yeah. a lot like it's crazy i used to my toughest register when i was a student was the high register oh yeah mine yeah. was low then yeah low i was like go. boom yeah but what was high, bad for me high i could just do all the time probably because you had better airspeed maybe probably i was like more of a slow blower <laughs> i don't know there like you it's all like you there know you then yeah. you have to learn the, the contrary thing and yeah. then sometimes people in the middle it's just like oh how do i keep this with the same fingering and it doesn't go back down you know yeah exactly so practice in front of a mirror and use those muscles that yeah uh, use the S sound. Exactly. And we're going to have a video about the middle register coming out, I think, hopefully this week that's going to be a bit more in-depth to that, to what we were just talking about. But yeah. So hopefully uh, that... I saw some other questions too, which is really great. Um, somebody was saying here... Oh, yeah. Sometimes I don't feel satisfied with my sound at home. Do you recommend acoustic sponges at home in a room for flute players? Do you think it's necessary? I don't think it's necessary. At all. I think uh, room sound is just, you're in a box, you know, like it's going to sound different. If you play outside, you're going to sound different than you would inside. But if you're going to record, you know, recording techniques can really mask a lot of the problems of a room. Because a microphone designed for, let's say, flute sound or a specific type of sound that's close to it, that's going to help more than, you know, for the investment of sponges, you could buy a nice little microphone that's going to probably help you with recording but it also depends like what don't you like about the sound of the room is it that it's too echoey and hurts your ears yeah. or is it that it's so um dry, dry. that you feel like your sound is dead because right. i know some people like to practice like in a 
uh, bathroom so that they yeah. feel like they're or in a big room. But in know. a way, that's not necessarily the best thing. Because no. if you practice in something that's a bit more dry, yeah. then you're going to aim for a better sound. Yeah, more control of different colors and sounds that you can actually hear instead of it just kind of dissipating. Because if you practice in a place that's already very echoey, yeah. you might feel that your sound is better than it really is. Right. Um, and then, yeah. but like, if you want to practice articulation in an echoey place, it's good because it's di very more difficult to articulate fast in an echoey type of yeah. uh, acoustics. But for like sound quality and uh, brilliance and and having a sound that can travel yeah. in a more dry place, you can hear. A, yeah, it's a better place to work on it. Exactly. But then, like, if you if if it's too echoey and it hurts your ears. Uh, you should really put stuff because yeah. like you don't or just find a room that has m couches carpet um stuff in it don't be in a room Fabric. that just has four walls and that's it because it's just going to bounce 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 and never stop bouncing but if you have a room that has bookcases in there uh bookcases can kill sound tremendously imagine it's, a bookcase is basically like a large sound sponge that's different types of you know, angles and each yeah, book is different. It's going to cut those. carton, like paper. Yeah, paper, all those, all those things. things. They just stop the sound from, they bounce and then they cancel themselves out where they bounce to the next spot. The more spaces it has the bounce close to each other, the faster it's going to, the, the drier your sound's going to necessarily you get. You used to have like a nice carpet on your Yeah, you could a carpet. Yeah, carpets, because if you don't have, if you have all hardwood floor and just walls, you're going to have a, a boomy and room. It's probably going to, hurt your ears because like oh, when yeah, you get the high notes and if it bounces on the walls like yeah, yeah. that's you, why like in a closet if you have a big enough closet that you can actually like play in that's actually better than the room that you're a room that's not that just has walls and a hardwood floor you practice in your walk-in closet you practice in your walk-in <laughs> closet the, with the all clothes. your clothes <laughs> yeah with all your clothes and then that's a place where you can practice your articulation and all those things and make sure they're nice and sharp and nice and powerful so that when you play in a room that thing can travel and so the person in the back room can hear your articulations. You oh, know? I was thinking the opposite. Like articulating in an echoey place is more difficult. So I would tend to practice that there. But I, I would practice would, yeah. more the sound It's only quality. difficult if you don't have anybody there. If you have somebody there in the back so they can tell you, oh, I can hear it. Mm. You have to have a reference or have a recording in the back so you can record that microphone. So you can But like know. anyways, we don't need to overthink it as long as it yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. hurt your ears. Exactly. And if it does, maybe it's because it's... There's not enough fabric in the room. Yeah, Maybe yeah. put a carpet on the floor or... Yeah, you or know, stuff. Just put stuff in. Just put stuff in in the room. Don't uh, fill it up with just stuff. doesn't put matter. cushions on the couch. Yeah, whatever. even cushions on the floor. It doesn't matter. As long as there's stuff that it can, you know... Because panels, we have them here. They do do some type of cancellation for certain types of things that we need sometimes. But in reality, we have a carpet underneath here with hardwood floor, with a flooring, plastic flooring. But we also put um, sound dampening stuff under the carpet as well too because there are vibrations when people walk or when you're moving around this acts like a little suspension thing and those things are cheap you can get at any hardwood store yeah they're the yeah. we just bought the a roll, um, a roll of uh, what you would put under uh, the click in uh, yeah uh, they're click noise in, canceling yeah fa just a little plastic plastic, thing. plastic yeah that you would put Sponge. under the click it the click in uh, floors tiles but yeah we put it under, under our carpets. a carpet and we yeah. just glued it there yeah and it works great and we just cut it to size yeah and, it's, and it works very well when we were in an apartment and we had neighbors downstairs my piano was on that yeah no one ever said anything no. i don't think they even knew we had a piano no i don't think so either and it's very cheap so there are a lot of little things like that hopefully we'll do a nice big studio tour of what what's actually in here it's because it's a nice space but right now we're still in that uh <laughs> we're still in our adjusting mode and painting and all those things yeah yeah, yeah 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 i saw another wonderful question here um where was it oh my can you play no that's not the one oh that indian flute oh how is the indian flute different from the western flute we're actually going to make a video about that very soon it's going to be pretty cool about can you hear the difference between Oh, I'm sure you can. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see, you know, but, between uh, the two. Well, big difference, it's not made of the same material. Right, of course, but, but that's even when you have a, yeah. even when you have a modern flute in wood, there's more, there's keys on the modern flute and there's yeah. no keys on the, you know, it's... Exactly. 
just well, holes on the front. And also it's in one key, but we're going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. what can you, can you hear the difference if they're in the same key, if you're playing in the same key and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So it's going to be cool because we got two two professional uh, bamboo flutes, uh, Bansuri flutes that are amazing. And yeah, uh, that's very cool. Those are going to be really cool. So we're going to do a little bit of that soon. Uh, Louis Bertrand Tex was wondering, he's like, it's not a question, but he uh, he wants to say that his tone sounds better when he whistles the note. I've never played an instrument, but I like to, I never played an instrument, but I like to whistle, especially in big resonating spaces. I don't actually whistle into the flute, but my mouth takes the shape and then I feel resonance in my head. Oh, and that happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like you, pl you play the flute as if you were whistling? Is that, is that what? I guess that's what that is, yeah. Okay, sorry for the light. Yeah. Technical difficulties. But I think, yeah, <laughs> good. Okay. We're back. We're back. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know, because personally, I think if you, if you whistle, you put your lips forward, and it's not a good position for playing the flute, but... Maybe uh, what you mean, maybe it works because it's a bit like when you sing in the flute and your body kind of resonates in the same frequency as, uh, as the note you're playing. That would be my guess, if I understood the comment correctly. Yeah, I guess so. And like there's whistle tones and wolf tones. Those are pretty similar, like the lightly playing across the flute. Yeah, but whistle tones, you don't really do. The mouth no, you don't do you the mouth whistling. thing. No, exactly. It's just that you you blow in a way that's like um, not focused, mm -hmm. and then it just the, the way the air hits the the other side of the uh, the embouchure plate, oh, it just yeah. makes a whistle. But it's mm -hmm. not you don't put your mouth like for whistling. No, you don't put your lips forward. I don't think putting your lips forward is a good idea, but. If, if it means that you're just moving inside as if you were singing or whistling that note, right. and then you're in the right resonance, like maybe that helps with your sound. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully it helps, if that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's a thing, you know. Oh, yeah. And like, whatever works for you, it works, it works. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a lot of new people are also joining in the podcast, which is really great. Hello, everybody. That's really amazing. Uh, Jennifer wants to know, is it necessary to go to, to have lessons if I'm playing in, uh, for the long term? Because I know most of the keys apart from some keys in the high register, or could I just self-learn? Uh, what? Basically saying, like, is, is it having necessary lessons, to have, have a, lessons to long have term? Lessons. Yeah. No, it's not necessary, but it can be helpful. Like, oh yeah, because and I guide you through those things. Because like scales, you have to know scales from low register to high register, fluidly. You know, not just independently between. Yeah, and like a good teacher will be able to see right away oh. what tweaks could help your your playing the most, yeah. and then you can work on that. And then also sometimes if you work a lot on something, but you don't know how to work on it. Or have you already achieved it already so you can move on? Or like sometimes I have students who didn't have lessons in decades and they developed bad habits and they didn't know, they didn't notice and no one told them because they didn't have a teacher. And then they practiced that habit for decades. And so it's not a big deal. We take care of the habit and we just change it. There are ways to do that. It's not at all a problem, but just saying that can also help to have a good teacher to see, be careful you're doing that, help you. If the teacher can help you notice that habit that mm -hmm. you have and mm -hmm. then you can change it and practice with better habits. But it doesn't mean that you need to have an hour lesson every week. You know, there are many different ways to go about that. And, uh, and also like some a good teacher should be able also to give you some type of uh, structure in your practice so that uh, your practice is uh, you know efficient and you're not losing your time yeah because a lot of people think it's about how many hours of practice uh, per week or per day but it's also a lot about how you practice yeah, what exactly. you practice 
Some mm-hmm. people practice too much or practice too many different exercises yep. and they should do less exercises, less exercises, but repeat them more. You're so right. You know, so that they become easy. It's mm-hmm. not about doing uh, the whole Tafanel and Gobert book. Or doing all the etudes in an etude book or whatever. No, or doing all the pieces uh, in a book or sometimes whatever. Sometimes less is more. Oh, yeah. Less is and more. Yeah. choosing what's really going to bring you to the next level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, I think our book for that is pretty good at yeah. our bringing book, yeah. things one after totally. the other and making sure you have a pretty good base and we're working on the next yeah. one we're really getting there yeah and if you don't know already yeah as Emily was saying we have a beginner book over at musogy.com m-o-m-u-s-o-g-y.com and that's a beginner series pdf also physical book if you want it plus uh videos a video package with audio files and stuff like that that corins- uh, co- coordinate with the book as well yeah. you can get that there And that's an amazing thing to start. It's 15 lessons that you would have you, with you, you know, and yeah. get you going. And the all only that difference stuff. is you don't get the retroaction from yeah. the teacher, but you get all the stuff that all I the would stuff teach that you, you. Would teach and the guidance towards 15. You know, that's almost a year's worth of lessons. You know, right there, pretty much to, yeah, get, yeah. to get you through to the beginner stage of playing the flute. And it's super helpful. We've sold several hundred, almost a thousand of those wow. books, and so that's it's so uh, amazing. it's amazing that's to see that shame. all around. And it's really great to see all those. Uh, Uh, people wanting to start the flute because there's so many people starting the flute more than ever, even through quarantine, but even before quarantine, so many people, we've, we've had so many people come to us and uh, have had a, a good experience with that. I saw another, re- oh, um, about the embouchure with the wolf tones. The, the person keeps a, a proper, okay, it's and it's just, Lewis from uh, Ontario. Oh, I you're think. doing whistle I tones. So. Whistle tones are pretty good. For yeah. um, controlling high notes, piano. There you go. Yeah, they can help with that. Exactly. Yeah, I was not understanding it very well. Oh, no, that's the Sometimes thing. Sometimes, you know, I uh, don't get everything. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, a couple more questions, and then I'll be the end of the show. Uh, but amazing questions today, and uh, thanks for the super chat. Uh, oh yeah, and thank you so much. You know much. that helps us out so much. It goes directly to us and uh, helps us out make new videos. or helps us do more cool stuff on the channel. And it's pretty amazing. Uh, flute player, what can I do to be able to sing into the flute better? I've had problems with that, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Ah, singing with the flute. Maybe you're trying to have a nice tone. Yeah. It's not going to sound nope, good. Never. And don't try to make it sound good. Just it's an aesthetic. Try to, yeah. Just try to make the sound. Yeah. And try to find references. <laughs> like, obviously, there's uh, Jethro Tull and all those types of people. Find the references that you like. Try to imitate it as best as you can, because it's really a... Per, on a per person basis, because I know some people who who who, who uh, sing in the flute, and another person sings the flute, and they sound very different, and it's the same thing, you know, like. But also the voices are probably. Different. That's what I mean. And that's also what I mean. like so, a man versus a woman. Yeah. The so voice don't get is too. Uh, yeah. Don't get. But too like uh, maybe I have a video about how to sing in your flute. Maybe you don't need to if you watched it already and you don't want to watch the whole thing, but maybe just listen to what it sounds like when you want to do it so you're not aiming for the same quality of sound that you have when you don't mm-hmm. sing because it's not the same quality of sound mm-hmm. it's uh, just different you know mm-hmm. i was surprised the first time i did it like oh that's how it sounds <laughs> yeah, exactly i clean my flute with my dryer don't clean your flute with your dryer <laughs> don't do that use the the rod that's inside there the moisture inside will evaporate on the tube It's more about just, if you don't even have anything, just let it out. <laughs> just don't even, just let it out to dry. No, no dryer. Don't do anything like no dryer. Don't put hot air. It'll shrink the pads and the pads will then, the pads are, you know, the pads are made of different layers. And on the top of it is like a fish. Usually it's usually a, a bladder type of uh, layer and it's stacked. And then when you, it, it shrinks and contracts. And when you shrink it, it gets, there's less surface and then it splits. And then you have a leak. And then you have to get the pad replaced. So And that's expensive. That can be a very expensive thing. So giving rapid air, hot air or cold air, doesn't matter if you have a cold setting on your dryer or anything, don't do that. It will dry on its own. Um, if you if flu comes with a rod, get some some cotton swab or uh, not cheesecloth, but just some type yeah, of a no cloth. cheesecloth. You could use cheesecloth, but cheesecloth tends to get a little bit messy sometimes. But you can do that too if you have that. I Wrap it around the, the stick and like, then put it. You use Egyptian cotton, which is like... Yeah, I had like um, well. Egyptian cotton uh, yeah. sheets. Yeah. 
that were not good anymore. Yeah, bed sheets, like, the pillow sheets. 30 years old. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. They were very old. And then I just got... Yeah, cut them to size. and then They're the softest yeah. uh, you can find. You and know? they absorb. So do that. Do not use a dryer, please. Buy a um, <laughs> um, thing for the... You know, just for your, your pillow, a pillowcase. Yeah, a pillowcase, yeah. A pillowcase in an Egyptian uh, cotton yeah, or something Walmart like that. Yeah, Walmart and cut it up. <laughs> cut it up, you yeah. know. <laughs> if you can't find anything. I know there are other companies and there's and microfiber and all those types of yeah, things. Yeah, that's also That's all good fine. too. And also you can um, make sure you don't make have it too big because yeah. sometimes people have too much fabric and then they make a big roll and then they sh- like... Exactly. You don't want to put too much fabric in there and mm-hmm. then you you can damage your flute as well mm-hmm. just just enough mm-hmm, exactly oh uh, maria she's from tanzania maria davis we know her she's a long time uh, viewer of the of the show and the, the channel she's like i don't have a teacher about the teacher question about whether you need a teacher or not and the problem i'm having is i don't know where to go next after achieving maybe playing a piece to perfection yeah maybe look at um Maybe look at uh, online, like uh, Royal Conservatory of yeah. Music and things like that. Outlines. They have their their syllabus online. Yeah, for free. And so you can check it out. If you see like, oh, I'm playing a piece that's level four, let's yeah. say. And uh, I want to k- stay in that and learn a couple of piece level yeah. four. And now, oh, I'm, I'm mastering that. Right. If you want a bigger challenge, go to five or six, you know, and that can help you figure out what to practice which scales which study which studies like where what your level is and then that can be helpful if you don't have a teacher and you want to use that that can be a yeah exactly a good tool for that could be a good tool totally um how can i fix the problem about playing out of tune a tuner can help yeah get a tuner so you can see the different the discrepancies between one note to the other you know because the intervals between each note have different types of tendencies they have to adjust to keep in tune. Like I have students, sometimes I tell them that um, like they get lower at the end of a phrase. That's the classic of flutists, you know? We don't have as much air and then the, gets, the pitch goes too low at the end of a phrase. But they don't hear it. But then when I put the tuner in front of their eyes, they're like, oh yeah, because mm. they see it. And then the brain makes a connection between what they see and what they hear. And yeah, so a tuner is a good thing. Plus, like, you get to know which notes have a tendency to be high and to be low, and you can learn to uh, work with that. So yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So we have one final question, and I think it's a very interesting one, and then we're going to call it for this month. Uh, you can join us again at the end of every month, uh, the last Sunday of every month, uh, here live on YouTube, or if you're listening over on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Join us live sometimes and uh, participate. It's always great to see that. Or you can leave a voicemail and we can play it on the air at anchor.fm slash flute. And then there you can get the app and record a message. Or I think you can even record the message and then just upload it there. And it comes directly to us through Anchor. And if you're looking for a new uh, app to listen to podcasts, why not use the Anchor app? Anchor is in like an anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. So yeah, uh, Juan Louis. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. If you haven't played, um, if you haven't played the flute for a long time due to exceptional circumstances, for example, an illness, will you still be able to continue on your flute career journey? And what is the longest time that anyone has been on a break from their instrument? I don't know what the world record is for that, <laughs> but I know people who have had horrible, disease, horrible illnesses and couldn't play for two, three years sometimes, and then went back to their went back and played and got in and got their job back or they had a sabbatical or whatever and was able to recover and you know there's ways like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't think it's there's still a, in there in your brain you, yeah. you're not like yeah some muscles will have to yeah. uh get back in shape yeah you know but you yeah. be patient you don't yeah. push it too much and then it comes back you yeah know? and don't feel guilty because it's it's only one part of your life you still got to live life you can't have just flute or just music life is life throws crazy crap at you sometimes sorry pardon that but that's uh, what happens and so you just gotta go through that it also you also have to enjoy life too and figure out uh how you can get back to what you want to do in your flute journey or your musical journey like don't put too much pressure on yourself because it's only gonna hinder your health yeah. more you know and like health should always be first oh, health is always number no one yeah health you can't do anything yeah so. mental health physical health both are equal both you gotta tackle down 
and yeah. if that's an issue and yeah i think it's uh it's always a it's it's always a sad thing and because it's something that you love to do but maybe keep listening to music you know keep listening to it maybe read scores do and stuff like, like that if, if you can't necessarily play that is uh, due to posture yeah. you said there's more and more flutes that are Oh yeah, ergonomic. Yeah, now. we're actually going to work with a, a maker in in Europe soon. They're retooling now, but they're going to send us some ergonomic head joints. And I'm really a big proponent on ergonomics. And we're going to show some new stuff that we're trying to create with 3D printing. And like, don't and, be yeah. afraid to use a thumb port or a bebop. You right. know, bebops are for the left hand, right. thumb port for the right hand. Yeah. Like there is no problem with that right. at all. Like yeah. the If you're comfortable, yeah. if you're more comfortable to play, it's yeah. just a plus. There's yeah, no totally. minus in that no, equation. Exactly. It's just a plus. You're not losing yeah. anything. You're not less of a flutist because you have a no. thumb port or a bebop. Yeah, exactly. I have a student who has a little bit of um, arthritis in her left hand. Yeah. So she got a bebop. Yeah. And she exactly. puts even a thing to hold her when yeah, she plays. Yeah, wrist thing. Yeah, like, wrist holder. Yeah, I yeah. said, buy that and yeah. the bebop will try Yeah. And she can play longer without pain. Yeah. She's happy about that. Like, I yeah. don't know what type of health yeah. situation it is, but if it's something like that, like, and I they're, know, yeah. they're, try to find solutions around mm -hmm. it as well. Yeah, and I know a lot of people, especially with YouTube, we see a lot of flutists playing in a lot of different ways. And we have and we think, oh, I must have to, I have to play like that. I have to play straight or play this way or that way or whatever way position and the way we stand and the way we sit. Or I'm not going to be as successful as they are. Or I'm not going to achieve what they achieve. No, like everybody's body is different. You really have to internalize and figure out what is your your resting position, how you can play with your resting position as best as you can so that you can maximize all the parts of your body that you're playing. Because flute playing, it's not the fingers. It's your fingers are connected to things that are connected up to your shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. And when you get pain for some people, it's up here and not there. Or it can yeah, be sometimes elsewhere. Sometimes the pinky... Can, yeah, we have to can think. Be the the nerve that goes from the pinky yes. to the shoulder. Our nerve system is very yeah. complex, and we have to work with our body and not against it. And it can be something stuck in your yeah, in your wrist, in which your has wrist. Uh, several. It has it's like so many little bones in there. Little I bones and also nerves and the nerve yeah. connections. It's a big subway station rest stop for everybody, you know. But that's there. also a reason why it's very important not to lift the mm. the elbows yes. too much. Because you don't, you want to keep your wrists as yeah. neutral you're adding, as possible. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not so meant right. to be like that and move the fingers. Because gravity now start is now gravity. Our greatest enemy is pulling us now here and pulling us there and all these other places. We have to and really. Plus, you're just that's too much of a range. That of motion. too, yeah, totally. The that's range of motion, you're so right, yeah. yeah. Like keep it in a normal range of motion, like as little as possible. But also, I remember when I was a teenager, there was a girl in my school just a little bit older. And you know, when you're that age and someone is just a bit older, you think like they're gods. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, she's so pretty when she plays the flute because her elbows were high. And I thought it looked like a bird or something. I don't know. You know, I thought it was pretty. So I started doing that. And then I was like, no, no, that hurts. And I mm -hmm, stopped it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah. sometimes, like you said, you see someone doing something and you're like, oh, she's super good. And she was very good. Sure. But it's still not the right way to play. Yeah. I knew some amazing players that played very well when they were teenagers. And then I caught up with them. And now they don't play anymore because of severe pain. Because yeah. they had a position that was not... And nobody saw it. And it just made the nerves oh, go nuts. Sometimes amazing teachers yeah. don't see it. Because yeah. maybe they didn't have that type of issue. Yeah, it can happen. And then they don't really pay attention to that. Yeah, For different reasons, you yeah. know. You can have a very good teacher that's not going to look at that but like look at yourself in the mirror exactly like be just also mindful of how you feel and if you're in line with yourself right like you said it's not about being straight it's about being in line with your own body exactly so there we go yeah there's also somebody mentioned about crystal flutes i'll just we'll just uh we don't i don't know if we have a crystal flute or we used to have one or maybe we never had i one. never had a crystal flute maybe we'll get one we had a plastic oh one. plastic we one have. yeah but maybe we'll get one but i've heard them played and they sound cool They're all great flutes. Our auxiliary flutes are amazing. There's a whole world of them. We have, we're growing our collection and we're going to be sharing more of that with you guys That's as so well. Cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody. There's also, uh, somebody said there's a wrist yoga, physical therapist do it. That's so cool. Wrist yoga. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's something we should look into and how how that works because that could be really cool because the wrist is a very fragile part and yeah. we use it a lot in flute playing. But for me, when I overuse, mm -hmm. like 
uh, I'm careful of the exercises mm -hmm. because I've heard myself doing exercises that right. were supposed to help me. So I'm very careful with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, thanks everybody. Again, join us at the Sunday of every last Sunday of every month. If you haven't leave, left a review over at Apple Podcasts, and if you use Apple Podcasts, go there, find our podcast, leave us a five star review, and we'll also read the comment too as well on the air. I know some, several people have done that already. We have several dozen reviews, but the more reviews, the better for that. Also, if you're looking for merch, we have our Long Long shirt here and also other new shirts. I think we have a Happy Practicing shirt, too, that just got uh, released as well. Uh, go to store.thefluechannel.com or go to the video. All the merch is underneath the video we on have the merch cool shelf. Leggings yeah, Mozart leggings that you're going to show off hopefully in the next yeah, couple I weeks, have to too. We have to do, we'll do that. something with that. So we have some cool ideas. They're so cool. And also our beginner book. And also, if you want to play uh, Emily's transcription of the 24th Caprice of uh, Paganini, I know you're working on other ones too, but uh, you can find that over at musogy.com, M U S O G Y.com. And also your, your lesson packages and all those things are there too. So. And if you're looking for a flute, finally, uh, go to the Flute Center of New York at flutecenter.com or flutecenterofnewyork.com. Both are interchangeable. You can uh, go there and try up, up to three flutes or piccolos um, for up to 10 days. And, and use you're gonna, our code TFC. Use our code TFC. And it Please. gives you an extended warranty as well, too. Uh, you can either contact them through email or you can call them. They're all flutists there. And they have the largest collection, selection and collection of uh, used and new flutes. So yep. you have, have everything, everything there. So, yeah, it's amazing. So thanks, everybody, so much for participating with the podcast. Thanks for the super chat as well. Those help us out tremendously as well. That goes directly to us. So when you're joining us live do that if you can, because if you find our stuff helpful, uh, it's a great way to help us out. So yeah, see you guys next month. Thanks for watching, Thanks for and, watching listening. and listening. <laughs> <laughs>